Good morning guys. We're taking Peppy to the vets this morning. Nothing serious, just a check up, but thought we would take you along with us so that you can see all the procedures and everything. I don't think I can actually take you in um, because of COVID and stuff, it's quite strict. So I'm gonna have to don a mask in a minute and take her in. Ben's gonna wait outside, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> Something, something I can never be without, yeah I'm in your command Thought I was a man of my own, but It's been two years I'm only a shadow of the good on me now I just got back from the vets Really impressed, that was our first visit to that vet since we moved Because we moved last year um, and then had meant to get her in for a checkup, but then Christmas happened and we were busy with the move and then this year coronavirus happened. So that was the first time we managed to get her into the vets. Um, really, really impressed. They were all in full PPE. I was only allowed in. I had to wear a mask um, and Ben had to wait outside. And when I went in, I had to anti-back and then um, <clears throat> check her in. And then we were led into the waiting area and every seat, there were only three seats in the waiting area and each seat was separated by a glass panel. So that was really good. And then um, the vet came out and spoke to me. It was a male vet, he was lovely. And um, he took Peppy into the room. So I wasn't allowed in the room because I think they, I, I can only assume they have to take off some sort of PPE so that they can see the animals because obviously when they're when they're looking at them they have to use the stethoscopes and things like that i think it's quite hard with ppe on so i i assume that's why you're not allowed in the rooms um but they were fantastic i was so impressed um it came back <clears throat> she's pretty healthy she's okay um but we are over cautious as well so there are a few things that she needs so she went in for um a jab she needs a booster jab in two weeks time and then she's fully up to date with all her injections and then we're going to get her booked in at some point to get her teeth done um to get a full teeth clean and they'll have to put her under for that and at the same time they're going to look at her um trachea um and her throat because we did mention the reverse sneezing he said it sounds like she does potentially have a bit of collapsed trachea but it's not something that they can really treat. It's just something you manage. Um, and she's so little, it'd be quite difficult to treat that anyway. So that's fine. We're not too worried about that because it doesn't happen all the time and we manage it fairly well with just like the massaging of her neck. Um, what else did he say? She has, you know I've said before in previous videos that I don't think her eyesight is great. So he actually confirmed that and he said, and he's the first one to confirm that. So she has overactive tear ducts, which means that she cries a lot, um, which is a trademark of the breed. Um, if you have a Pomeranian, you may get the same, especially if you have a white one and you ever notice with little white dogs, they get like red um, patches under their eyes. That's from overactive tear ducts. So she has that, which is fine. I just wipe her tears away um and it doesn't it doesn't seem to bother her it doesn't bother me um but he was the first vet to mention that in three years of having her um and also they he mentioned um yeah she has i don't know the technical term for it but basically her eyesight is fine but it could it could progressively get worse as time goes on um and then her back leg as well, her back left leg, not, it's not a laxating patella, I don't think, but her joint just kind of pops out and pops back in again quite a bit. And he said, again, that's literally nothing to worry about, um, just something to keep an eye on. Um, and yeah, he said he popped it out on the table, which sounds horrible to me, <laughs> but then he put her on the floor and she was, she just popped it straight back in herself. So um, he said literally nothing to worry about. And apart from that, he said she was absolutely absolutely golden in the room he said she behaved herself really really well and I think when he was in there he has a nurse come in um with him just to give her 
give her a bit of a fuss while he's doing like the injections and things like that so yeah that was um that was really good so it seems that she is okay hopefully um apart from needing to go back in two weeks for her booster jab and then um going back at some point i think in the next six months to have her teeth cleaned she seems to be um pretty okay so that's a weight off our minds i think um we weren't worried she's generally a pretty healthy dog but um obviously she's our baby and we always want to make sure that she's okay um one thing i will say they do have a health plan so it's always worth checking with your vet if they do have a health plan so the health plan at our vets is 13 pounds a month and that includes a, a six month checkup and in one of those six month checkups, your booster vaccine is included. So your annual booster vaccine is included. Um, your flea and worm treatment is included for the whole year. Um, what else? You get like one on one consultations and um, checkups and things over the phone. You get lots of support and things like that. So it's definitely, we're definitely going to sign up for it because I think I'll visit just then for the consultation and the injection was 40 pounds which i don't think is awful um so i just popped that on my card but i think going forward we're going to do the 13 pounds a month thing um just for peace of mind as well and then they get to know her better um and they've got everything on record and something else that um i think is really really helpful is we keep everything i don't know if ben's put it back we keep everything in a file for peppy um yeah he's put it back in the cupboard but anyway so we basically just have like a white ring binder and that has everything in it so it's got a record of all her um injections her passport when we fleed her when we've wormed her all of that sort of stuff so if you are a palm or any dog owner it is worth getting everything in a file um and then whenever we go to the do to the vets we literally just take the file with us and give it to him and he has everything he needs so there's literally never any question of um of anything really because he has everything all her medical records and can see everything there and then and um anything that's a little bit technical and i can't describe to him it's in the file anyway so I think that's really really helpful i'm doing a little bit of a tidy and i'm gonna make a devon apple cake because we have luke and zara coming over um i cannot for the life of me this is what happens when you are in the online space you speak to people every single day and you feel like you know them really well but i don't actually know if i've ever met luke and zara in person no idea um but they're both lovely ben and i took so much comfort watching um luke's stories at, at the very start of lockdown especially we took so much comfort watching luke and zara on instagram because they're both just so funny um they live together they're housemates and they live in london together but zara is a devon girl like me um so they're down in plymouth visiting zara's family i think and they're gonna stop by for some lunch, which should be really nice. Sadly, the weather is disgusting, so we're gonna to have to sit in the kitchen to have lunch. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. I'm gonna make a, uh, it will be a vegan asparagus pea and potentially mint risotto. Um, it's just super easy, a little bit healthy um, and everyone's favorite. And then I'll make a Devon apple cake as well and I'll, do a couple of extra slices so they can take that on the car ride home with them because they're stopping by ours on the way back to London. So that should be really, really nice. And apart from that, we have a seriously busy week, like seeing people. Um, a lot of blogger friends, well, I say a lot. We have another blogger friend, Bonnie, coming tomorrow. So that should be really, really nice. And Mel as well. I'll um, put their handles along the bottom so you can see. Um, so yeah, that's that. Anyway, I need to get cracking in the kitchen, making this cake and making the risotto and I need to tidy up our bedroom as well because it's an absolute state and it is not ready for visitors to come and see. Devon apple 
apple cake is in the oven. Now I'm gonna make the risotto. We're doing asparagus, asparagus and pea. Anything else? Onion for the counts. Yeah. <laughs> asparagus and pea risotto. Um, it's gonna be vegan, but we do have some, not parmesan, what is it? Uh, it's like parmesan it's style. Cheese, yeah. Basically, it's like a hard cheese that's vegetarian. Because if you didn't know, parmesan is not vegetarian. Neither is Manchego. Neither is Manchego, which we sadly found out today. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to get cracking with that now. They're not too far away, so hopefully they should be here soon. friendly um, and I know that if that beach car park is full there are two other beaches around one called Hope Cove and one called Ban Bantham, Bantham. Um, so fingers crossed one of them works out we're meeting Bonnie and Mel there um, Bonnie and Mel are both bloggers um, and friends and they've come down to spend the week down in Devon it's so funny that everyone comes down and um, has their summer holidays in Devon and Cornwall which is literally on our doorstep so we do feel like we're very very lucky um, but yeah so they're coming down so we are kind of hosting them for the day I've made some coronation chickpea sandwiches because when we went to where was it turf uh, or no double locks, double locks yeah. the other day we had coronation chickpea sandwiches and they were unreal so I've kind of um, made my own attempt at the recipe and yeah we've got sandwiches packed we've got hot flasks of tea in case it does pour with rain um oh i forgot to pack crisps oh no Oops. but we do we'll have survive. devon apple we'll cake survive. as well left over from yesterday so we um have packed up the car we've got blankets and things like that as well and fingers crossed we get a nice day at the beach and some sunshine because the beach is no fun if there's no sun Sands. Look how beautiful the archway is over there and the blue sky, although the sun has disappeared for a minute, but it is there and we've got these two. Oh my goodness, it's so dark. It looks like a miserable day. <laughs> We're just setting up our picnic, ready for some photos. It looks so yummy.
somewhere. Um, lovely, lovely day at the beach. We are now taking the scenic route to Dartmouth along, I keep eating my hair, <laughs> along at Slapton Sands um, to go and have a look at that. And yeah, we're gonna go to Dartmouth and maybe find a little pub there where we can sit and have a drink and maybe some pub grub. That would be so nice, wouldn't it? I think that's the first time uh, we've had pub grub yeah, nice. now, in now the longest time, I know. <laughs> um, Bonnie and Mel are following us in the car behind. Uh, so yeah, we're driving on convoy, on convoy? In, in convoy. convoy um, to go there, but yeah, it should be really, really nice. So I'll, I'll update you when we see something scenic. <laughs> Come to Dartmouth. The girls are with us. Oh my god, this is steeper than I thought it was yeah, gonna be. Yeah, okay. I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get steep, so I'm gonna put this away. But we've come oh to Dartmouth. God. We're gonna have some drinks here, maybe a little bit of food. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, come to see the beautiful view. Oh my god, I'm gonna hang up because this is getting really steep. <laughs> we are at Platform One, which is a champagne bar and restaurant in Dartmouth with the girls. Cheers! Oh, oh yeah! Oh. <laughs> Thank you! And look at the view we have behind. So beautiful. What speed do you want? That's not the one. had the most amazing day at the beach yesterday with Mel and Bonnie. It was glorious. We then stopped at a little uh, place called Platform One. It's a champagne bar um, and we had a couple of glasses of champagne and then hopped back in the car and came home. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely lovely. Such a nice day. Um, hopefully we got some nice little clips from it. I know I didn't vlog too much, uh, because it was just nice to catch up with friends and obviously we've not seen so many people since the start of lockdown or since even before um, so yeah it was just really really nice to catch up we are going to crack on with the master bedroom today we really really want it done now so I'm giving us like 10 days to finish it um in the hopes that we actually do but I, I i actually believe that we can do that because to get the paneling up it's not going to take that long to cork it all I mean, I've not tried my hand at caulking before, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It's not too difficult. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, and then all we've got to do is paint everything, paint the floor. We're going to replace a couple of the floorboards. So I think Ben um, is going to buy them. And then that's kind of it. We have to put the skirting board on. I'll tell you what, the mitre board saw or the mitre saw that we bought has been a game changer. To do the jungle room, I do, I'll put the video up here, and I don't know if I showed it, but we had to saw each individual piece of wood for that room, and to get all the um, 90 degree angles with just a box, a mitre box, if I'm talking a load of gibberish, then it won't make sense to you, but um, 
So we used a mitre box for those angles and human error is massive. So <laughs> with the saw, it's just so much more accurate and I think it was 60 pounds. So it's, it's not cheap, but it's not unaffordable. Um, and actually it's, I'm sure it's made its worth in that room. Uh, I really don't think we could have done all those bits of panelling without that piece of equipment. So it's been super handy and it will be so useful for future DIY projects and things like that. So yeah, the room is coming together so well. I'm so excited to have it finished. Um, but yeah, all we've got to do is paint the room, finish the panelling, cork everything, paint the floor, let that dry, put the skirting board on, mm, probably quite a bit more to do actually. <laughs> has been made in the master bedroom. I'm so pleased with how this is looking now. I feel like the space looks much bigger. Let me know if you feel the same, but this is what it's looking like. So obviously we've only done half of the, is this called a dado rail? I'm not sure. Um, so we've only done half of that. We need to get a little bit more here and we also need to do that bit and obviously these bits as well. But I do think this has made it such a difference and it just looks so much bigger and when this is painted it's going to look beautiful
just had to shut the door because Ben is playing with one of his friends um, on the Xbox PlayStation upstairs and I always feel like I say this because <laughs> he plays so loudly so I always have to shut the door and let him just do his thing. Um, anyway, I realised I've not vlogged today at all. Today is Thursday and I know this video should have gone live today but um, ben and I decided to take a trip to the beach. It is beautiful weather in the UK at the moment and so we decided to make the most of it and we took a trip to the beach which was stunning. I'll put the name of the beach on the screen below when I remember what it's called but it was just absolutely beautiful. Pebble Beach, you have to walk across a park um, and across the top of the cliffs to get to it but it was just so stunning honestly it felt like we were in the south of France so we chilled on the beach there we took our chairs and actually it was a much better day we took our chairs um, and a white like picnic blanket and strung that up so we had loads of shade for Peppy which worked out really really well this time so I think that's going to be our um, what we do going forward for her um so yeah it was uh, it was honestly just lovely it felt like we were on a mini holiday and i think we're going to try and get back to that beach at some point um because it was just so incredible i'd love to spend the whole day there um and stay there until like past dinner time i think it would be incredible but yeah anyway that's what we've been doing today um and I realised I hadn't ended the vlog. So just to say, I'm really sorry that this is going live on Friday rather than Thursday. But I hope you can forgive me for that. Um, we were just out having a really nice day. Um, and I didn't want to finish the vlog previously because I thought it would be nice to have a little bit more in there. Two beach trips rather than just one. Um, but yeah, anyway, loving Devon life. It's just so nice to live down here and have all of this on our doorstep. We are really, really are so lucky. Uh, but I'll end the video there. I really hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. If you've been to Devon, by the way, leave me down below your favourite beaches that you've ever been to um, and whether you've been to the ones that I've mentioned. Um, otherwise, I will see you uh, hopefully in the next video, which will hopefully go live on Sunday. But in the meantime, take care. I hope you have a lovely end to the week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.